This video is titled The Sanerican Sewage System. It was a shame that this country that was founded on the Word of God, founded on God's principles just like Israel, was blessed by the hand of God, second only to Israel, and just was flourished with with wonderful land and, and prosperity and, and wonderful families and wonderful churches and wonderful jobs and a terrific military that was bold and strong and that was a, a clean military that actually had morals and values and we had politics where prayer was said before Congress and the Senate met and presidents actually had days of prayers during times of, of trouble and, and challenge. And that's the old America what used to be called America, the United States of America. Well, now it's no longer, the, no longer the fact. We've turned our backs on God. We've become the divided, not united, the divided states of sin Erica. Emphasis on sin, just a wicked, filthy, festering cesspool. We are one of the porno leaders in the whole world of, of making, selling it, the abortion leader of the whole world, the country, the politicians and many in the country, even a lot in the church now, hate Israel. We become the homosexuality, the whole gay, lesbian, transvestite garbage capital of the entire world. We're just an evil, wicked, sinful cesspool. And since because of that, God's turned his back on us. He's removed his hand of protection, replaced that with his hand of judgment. That started on one one eleven. And the Holy Spirit gave me personal word on that just a few weeks before that, late November of 2010, that it was on its way for the reasons described above, plus many more. So the way it works, the sewage system of Sanerica, it starts out in the armpit of Sanerica, out in California. I've got a video on the armpit of Sanerica, but the sewage system starts there. And all the filth and the garbage and the lust and the abortion and the gay and all that stuff just flows west and flows east from the main sewage portal of California. And then what happens is it goes all the way across San Erica and it ends up in, <coughs> in New York, New York City. And New York City has a recirculation sewage plant. It recirculates the filth and the sewage from the cesspool of California and then it goes ahead and sends it down south. And it flows southward until it hits the Gulf of Mexico. And from there, the tides just carry it all across the world. It carries it to every every geographical location you can possibly imagine that wants to live like the devil. Uh, if you want to live like God or Jesus, the sewage just goes around. It navigates around your land. But most of the world wants to live for Satan nowadays, so they embrace the divided states of Sanerica's sewage. It'll just flow into their land and snake its way through however it works out for their particular area. And it's, it's horrendous. We've turned into a sewer hole and a cesspool. You know, the stench of this filthy nation just wafts up to the very throne room of God into his nostrils. And it just makes me sick. It fills me with righteous anger, holy discontent to even imagine this, that the Creator has to deal with this kind of junk from this filthy nation. And then this, this place wonders why, Sinerica wonders why things are so bad. She wonders why everything that can happen bad to her is happening and getting worse and worse all the time. The reason why she wonders is because she's turned into a mostly godless nation. There's a small remnant, a tiny remnant of Christians here, like there always has been and there always will be. God will always have a remnant of his people to keep the whole world from being taken over by Satan. Now, when we're raptured imminently, any second of any day, when the trumpet sounds, we hear, come hither, and we get raptured, then... The bride of Christ is gone, and Satan's, the Holy Spirit, is going to be mostly gone. He's omnipresent, so he'll always have a residual of the Holy Spirit, wherever, including the earth, but very little. And then, Satan's going to take over fully. You think he's walking around like a roaring lion right now, looking who he can devour? Wait until the church is gone. Wait until the bride of Christ and the Holy Spirit's gone. Then you'll see how bad things are going to be. You don't want to see that. You want to be in heaven. It's just terrible. It's horrendous. And even then, God will raise up a new holy remnant who will, the 144,000 who were marked, the evangelical Jews who are going to be witnessing to everybody and all the other Christians who are saved, there'll always be a remnant. But with the rapture of the, of the holy remnant of the bride of Christ, just those of us who are actually serving him, the way the Bible says, 
Not all Christians are going to be raptured. In fact, unless they start turning around and repenting and turning back to Jesus Christ, a tiny amount of Christians are going to be raptured. They think they're going to be, but the Bible says over and over again what the truth is. So what Seneca is going to realize is all the stuff that's happening to us right now, as a nation, we brought upon ourselves. It's our own fault. And that's what happens when you turn on God. We haven't learned the lessons from all the times that the Israelites turned on God. They're his chosen people. They're the apple of his eye. They're the original branches of the vine. Us as Gentiles just grafted in as wild branches to the vine of Jesus Christ when Israel turned on God. But we should have learned from the Holy Bible what happens when people that God embraced and love and chooses to touch and bless turn on him. We didn't learn any lessons, did we? It's a terrible, terrible thing. And all the world is learning from us now that used to look to us and say, hey, we want to come to where it used to be called America. We want to come to America, to Ellis Island. We want to come to New York City and immigrate here to this great nation of a shining light on top of the hill, a godly nation where they love God and they serve God and worship Him, where we'll have a chance to live our lives and, and make something of ourselves and raise a family. But no, not anymore. That old America is just a dream. It's just a whisper in the night. We're now sin, Erica, and no one, no one wants to come here unless they want to come here and be part of the filth. No one comes here to be in a pure, holy place anymore. They come here to get to get their hands dirty in, in, the, in the filth and the scum this nation represents. But you know what? God will not be mocked, and God will make all things right at the great white throne judgment in heaven. And our time's coming. This country's time's coming. I also firmly believe, and I've got a video on this, that details it precisely to, down to the, to the minor details. I believe that Seneca, America, formerly America, is the great horror of Babylon. And if I'm correct, then this country's already got its judgment waiting for it. And all we can do now as Christians who are part of the holy remnant, who actually live for Jesus Christ and worship him and follow the Bible, Genesis to Revelation, live for it word for word, just like it says, and make sure we repent, especially repent, of sins after being saved. We know how the Bible is really written. We don't call God a liar. We don't call the Bible a book of lies by trying to say that we're once saved, always saved. We know better than that. We need to just reach out. Share the good news of Jesus Christ. Reap the harvest. The harvest is so plentiful it's rotting in the fields from, due to lack of harvesters. Share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just get out there and work. Do something for the Lord because we don't have much time left anymore, my friends. And even though this place is terrible and wicked and filthy and sinful, we still have to have a heart for it and try our best through the Holy Spirit's power in us to point the people in this nation to the cross of Jesus Christ where the Holy Spirit can gently kneel them and the precious blood of Jesus can wash away their sins and make them whole, make them a new creature in Christ, take them away from their path to hell and put them on a path to heaven. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I'm so sorry at how filthy this country has become, how wicked it's become. It makes me so sad. It fills me with righteous anger, holy discontent. I pray that people would wake up here, understand that where this nation's heading, where the people here are heading, and that the terrible example we are for the rest of the world. How dare us, shame on us. We, we were blessed for so long and protected by your mighty hand. Enjoy the blessings of God. And now look what we've done to ourselves. And it's all our fault. Wake us up, Jesus. Raise up people in these last days. Raise up strong Christians with a backbone. Not the invertebrate jellyfish like we have right now. Not the Christians that are extinct, spiritually dead. Raise up more that are like the small group of us. that are We're still endangered species, but we're not extinct. We're not dead, but we're in danger because there's so few of us. But you'll never let us die off. You'll always have a holy remnant. Keep us strong, Jesus. Keep us focused. Help our numbers to grow. Help us to reap the harvest as long as we can until you call us home. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. And as always, my friends, if you watch this video and don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I know that I've sinned, I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth, I believe you died on the cross for my sins, I believe you are risen again on the third day, and I believe you went back to heaven, to the right hand side of the Father, to prepare a place in heaven for all Christians forever. Praise the Lord. Please forgive me of my sins, Jesus. Wash my heart. Make me whole. Live in my heart, please. Make me a new creature in Christ, child of the King. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. If you pray this prayer, my friends, Jesus says that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. If you'd like me to pray with you, send me an inbox, private message. You can call me. I do it on Facebook. I do it here. I'd love to pray with you. If you have a loved one, a friend, a neighbor, a co-worker 
anyone you know who don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If you're sick, you have a sick family member, friend, neighbor, loved one, co-worker, a sick pet. If you need a job, car, home, food, clothes, water, whatever you need, send me an inbox or private message. I would love, love to pray for you. I pray for people all the time. It's my joy. It's my honor. I had the gift of faith. I prayed for that. God gave it to me through no works of my own, all through Jesus Christ. I have mustard seed faith, my friends. I pray believing in my heart 100%. Speaking out loud with my mouth, 100% what I just believed in my heart, knowing that God will answer all my prayers as long as I pray within His holy will. And He does. He's done it countless times. I can't even remember how many times. He's performed miracles through His slave. So the same for you, my friends. His word says it. He never returns empty. He means what He says. Thanks for taking time to watch this video. Please share it with everyone you possibly can. Share the link to my channel wherever you go. All for the glory of God. Never for me. It's all to get the gospel out. So people can be saved and touched and their lives can be changed forever. I love you guys. Thanks for watching this video. I pray for you all the time. And I pray that God bless you. Good night.